Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Los Panos Talk. My name is Justin Collins. Tonight's episode, we're going to talk about something that a lot of you have been complaining about or interested in, and that is illegal fireworks and legal fireworks for that matter. I'm going to talk about what is legal, what's not legal, and most importantly, I'm going to be talking about what the city is trying to do to crack down on illegal fireworks, the fines that are available, and what you can do to help with the problem. And I'll get into all of that in just a moment, right after a brief message from our sponsor. Hey there, small business owner. COVID-19 restrictions might be going away, but it's still extremely important for your business to have an online presence which is why you need Curly Admin. Online traffic and sales have been increasing for years, long before COVID-19. Many customers like to research a business online first, and some customers will still prefer to stay home for a variety of reasons. And chances are, even when they are out, they're on their phone, which is why your small business needs a great-looking website on both mobile and desktop. And that's why you need Curly Admin. Curly Admin is a local Los Banos business that builds custom websites and even manages it for you. And Curly Admin is local right here in Los Banos, which means that getting support is easy and fast. For pricing and details, go to www.curlyadmin.com. Again, that's curlyadmin.com. And we're back. Thanks for watching. So earlier at the city council meeting held on June 16th, the city council received a presentation by our local fire chief and acting police chief on city fireworks, and particularly on fireworks that are illegal and also legal fireworks as well. Now, it's no mystery that for much of the year, our city sometimes sounds like a war zone. Fireworks are going off constantly, and it's very well, annoying to a lot of people, and, and it's more than that. It leads to all kinds of problems like stray dogs, traumatized children, veterans. It's acceptable to have fireworks sometimes, like on the 4th of July, but it's not really acceptable to do them all the time. And if you recall from last year, one of the problems we were running into was the fact that many gangs were using fireworks to actually mask the sound of gunshots because sometimes it's hard to distinguish the difference between the two. So with that being said, let's talk about what is an illegal firework versus a legal firework. And for that, I'm going to be referencing the city council's meeting. So the law specifically allows for fireworks that are, quote, safe and sane. And what does that actually mean? It means that it has this seal on it. It means that the that it is a firework that has been registered with the state of California state fire marshal. If it does not have said seal, it is illegal, period. So how do you know if your fireworks are legal or not? How do you know if a vendor is selling legal fireworks? Well, that's also pretty easy because the week of 4th of July, we have nine booths that are out and about in the city that will be selling fireworks and the money goes to various nonprofit charities. Those fireworks all have this seal and are legal fireworks. Fireworks you buy anywhere else may not be. But generally speaking, fireworks that you buy in a retail store, et cetera, are usually fine. But it's really the large fireworks that go off into the sky and make a large cloud. The ones that people complain about generally do not fall into this category and are usually illegal fireworks. But even a legal firework could be illegal if it's fired at the wrong time. So according to the city ordinance, so the only time you can legally fire fireworks is from July 1st to July 4th. And between the hours of 9 a.m. to 10 p.m., that's it. It also depends on the manner in which you release said fireworks. So for example, fireworks have to be released on private property and they can't be released on public property. So what does that mean? Well, essentially what it means is, is that you can fire fireworks, say in your driveway, at your house, in your backyard, preferably on some kind of concrete or paved surface, but you can't fire it in the sidewalk, in the street, in a public area. You just can't. It has to be on your property that you own, and it has to be done in a safe manner. And there's a variety of violations as well that go along with the unsafe discharge of firearms that the police are going to enforce this year as well. And those include things such as giving fireworks to a minor, 
So minors aren't allowed to possess fireworks, and if they're caught, it's a $50 fine. Additionally, discharging the firework is also an additional $50 fine, and it's per instance. So if someone has, say, five fireworks, that means they're going to pay $250, and if they light them all off, that's going to be $500 in fines. It's another $50 fine if it's done not within the specific time and in place that it is legal to fire fireworks. If you do it on other private property and you don't have the owner's consent, that's also finable. It's also illegal for an adult to allow a minor. So even if it's your kid, you can't. And yes, this does include sparklers. They made that clear in the meeting as well. And it's also unlawful to discharge fireworks on public property, which would mean the sidewalk, the road, public park, etc. Now those violations are really more for the way in which you fire the fireworks, but these are for possession of a firework that's illegal. In other words, any firework that doesn't have this stamp, and that could be a firework that's yet to be used or has already been used. And it's also like the other ones per incident. So let's say you have three fireworks of this kind, well, that would mean that you would have a fine of $3,750 for having three illegal fireworks. Now, because the actual crime in this particular case is the mere possession of illegal fireworks, it doesn't matter whether you've yet to shoot them off, recently shot them off, or if they're already expended. It really doesn't matter. Simply having in your possession fireworks that are illegal is resultable in this fine per how many fireworks of that kind that you have. So the next question you're probably asking me and dying to know is, well, Justin, how will this be enforced? And that's a great question. We all know that enforcing fireworks violations is actually pretty hard to do. The reality is, is that when a firework goes off, you know the general vicinity, but you don't really know who exactly let it off. And so the council and as well as the acting police chief talked about the way in which this will be enforced. And this is basically the policy that they said that they're going to put forward. The city is taking what's called a zero tolerance policy, meaning if you're caught, you will get the citation, period. There will be no warnings, opportunities, or other chances, you will be issued the citation. If an officer sees any of these violations, or seize it on hand, they are being instructed to enforce it and aggressively enforce this ordinance. But most of the time, officers don't see it happen. And most people aren't dumb enough to light fireworks right in front of a cop car. So how will this really be enforced? Well, the police department is relying on the community at this point in time. What they want is for people to call in and report the fireworks, but really they don't just want someone to call in and report the fireworks like, hey, it happened two streets over or kind of behind me. They want an exact address. The problem is, is that they can't really enforce it unless they have an exact address. So what this basically means is that it's going to require citizens, residents who live next to someone who repeatedly violates this ordinance to basically call them in and report them, at which point the police can actually go and enforce it because chances are the firework is expended, there's evidence on the sidewalk, the driveway, etc. A part of the firework is still there. And since the crime is written as being mere possession, it doesn't matter that it's already expended or that they didn't see them do it. But in order to do it, they need an exact address. And that's the challenging part. Now, during the time period of 4th of July, which for this purpose, we're going to call from July 1st to July 4th, they're actually going to have dedicated officers whose sole purpose is going to be enforcing fireworks violations. And as we get closer to the time, they're going to increase the amount of personnel that they dedicate to this purpose. They want the public to call in and report fireworks violations up until the 4th of July. However, on the 4th of July itself, they don't want the public to call in and report fireworks violations because at that point there would be too many and they're already actively doing their best and searching and trying to find these violations. But up until that point, 
they're really relying on community input. So I know that might not be the answer a lot of you want to hear, that you have to have an address basically in order to enforce this, but unfortunately that's kind of the reality of the situation. There was talks about using drones to enforce this, but the drones that the city possesses aren't capable of flying at night. Mayor Tom Freya asked about the possibility of acquiring drones that would have this capability, and they generally start at about the thirty to fifty thousand dollar range, and then discussion didn't really go further than that. This is how some other cities enforce these violations, which is through drones. And it's one of the most effective ways to do it, but it's also very pricey. And that's a discussion for another day. And the fiscal budget for this year has already been passed. And so any talks of this would have to happen next year. So once again, here's a few last minute tips to help keep you and your family safe as you celebrate the nation's independence and birthday, so to speak. One, fireworks must be used by a responsible adult. They're not for children, and it is a crime to allow a child to use them or supply them to a minor. Use an extended ignition device, such as a long match or a fire stick wand, commonly used to start grills. Cigarette lighters and other close distance ignition mechanisms are not really safe. If you light a firework and it doesn't go off, consider it a dud. It's not safe to try to relight the firework once again. The wick might be shorter and you might not have enough time to get away, or it might not actually be out. There might be a delayed effect. You could reapproach the firework and then it explode. Alcohol and fireworks and oil and water are very similar in that they don't mix. Do not use alcohol or drugs while using fireworks. While it's important to have fun on the 4th of July, it's also important to be safe and not make a mistake that you will regret for the rest of your life. Fireworks need to be set off on the ground. You can't put it up on a ladder or some other pedestal. You have to put it on the ground and you can't put it on the sidewalk or in the road as this is unsafe for motorists and could cause a problem. You have to do it on your private property, preferably your driveway. If you use illegal fireworks or fireworks that don't have the seal of approval, you risk a fine. But that's not all. There's a reason why there exists a seal. Those fireworks are considered safe and sane. They're only of a certain caliber. And the problem with illegal fireworks is you don't know what they're regulated. You don't know if they're regulated, the quality of product. It could explode on the ground. It may not do what you intend. It may have too little or too much gunpowder. There could be a variety of issues that could happen. It could cause property loss, damage, injury, or death. And last but not least, there are some really safe ways to enjoy fireworks this year. One, you can be sure that your fireworks are safe and legal if you buy them from one of the fireworks stands we have around in the city, and we have nine of them. The other reason I recommend you buy them from these is because these are local community organizations and nonprofits, and that money actually goes to a lot of really good things in the city. So if you're going to spend your money, keep it local, and not only will you have some fun, but that money will actually do some good. And if you don't want to have your own fireworks display, that's totally understandable too. The Downtown Association is going to be putting on a celebration that's going to happen at the 3rd of July. And this is going to be at the Henry Miller Plaza in downtown Los Banos. And it's free to the public. And there's going to be, after dark, a large professional fireworks display, which will be far better and superior than anything you could do in your backyard, I guarantee and a lot safer. So you always have that option as well. And on that note, in preparation for this season, but also something that really you should just do in general when you live in Los Banos, is to just understand that fireworks go off quite a bit. And obviously we know that dogs really get disturbed by them. I myself have dogs. And what I've done is I've basically prepped my backyard to where it's impossible for my dogs to get out. And I recommend you do the same. Any loose boards within your fence, replace them. Don't let your dog out into the front yard by itself to use the bathroom. Use a leash. Keep your dog within a fenced-in area or inside during those times. There's a lot of ways you could look online to try to make your backyard essentially 
dig proof or escape proof for even some of the most talented escape artists. Most importantly, have fun and stay safe. God bless America. If you haven't already, please like, follow, subscribe to Los Panos Talk. We have Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and of course, LosPanosTalk.com. You can become a supporter of Los Panos Talk for just $4.99 a month and gain access to all the videos first and ad-free. Plus, gain access to bonus behind-the-scenes content and opinion pieces as well. Once again, my name is Justin Collins, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Mm -hmm.